Good evening. How are you all doing, my friends? We welcome you to what do we call this? Overtime, right? Overtime. Sup, sup, in the spirit. spirit. <laughs> and, 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 and Devon has his radio voice on. Radio Your radio. Right now, I'm practicing the message how to love a woman. Okay, so I'm practicing that right now. Radio voice. <laughs> all right. How are you all doing? I'm glad that you all could join us. And I was trying to do three things at one time and make sure that we were live and everything was going well. And so I will now talk in a regular voice. Is this better for you? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> All right. No. So let's go ahead. I think we decided we or we talked about what we would talk about probably about an hour ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought I said, well, let's when we look at this, what's going on, you know, in the world and domestic disputes. Mm -hmm. And domestic means things going on in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, we often just think it's uh, relational, but it's also just, you know, male and female or just a uh, relationship where people are partners with one another. Mm -hmm. But I had a friend of mine explain that when you look at the court dockets right now, the domestic violence filings are so many that you can't even follow them all because it's showing that because people are in the house and because people are not able to do what they would normally do without some type of hindrance it has created a lot of tension and i said well jill what i think we should do is i'd like to you know we were going to go with what you had in terms of fire but I said, I'd like to go with, we still can talk about that, but I'd like to go with first, let's explain it. And let's talk about love and what has to happen. And I said, I'd like to talk about it on how to love a woman. Mm -hmm. What I had to go through to love you and love my mother, my sister, my sisters, everyone. Uh, I would have never thought that I was chauvinistic, but I was. I had many signs that showed that I was going along with the flow of what the culture was saying. And I had to begin to say, no, you got to switch up with that. And that's sort of why I ended up doing the boyfriend girlfriend thing and that kind of stuff. And then, you know, did things about uh, good sisters. And I have a lot of affinity towards women because I just know I can see, for some reason, I can see all of what you all go through. But if you, in order to be able to see that, I first had to understand how to love you. And so what I'd like to do is talk about how to love a woman. And let's just flow and we'll just go from here. Well, y'all ready for some truth? <laughs> we survived the storm. Y'all ready for some truth? It's gonna be some truth, man. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of truth. It's gonna be some truth. We can handle it. Can you handle it? I can handle it. Oh, look, I've been with you over 28 years. I know I can handle it. <laughs> I know I can handle this. So My you, granddaughter acts just like this. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I just realized that it's in the family line. And so, God, we thank you for this time. Bless the relationships, the homes, and I pray that something is said that will change somebody and that will help them to bring peace to their home, peace in their relationship, peace in their mindset. Father, let Jill and I say something that we've never said before and let us be transparent and also let us follow your spirit. Let us have brevity of speech when we need to be short-winded and let us be on point when we need to be on point. We thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for all of those who got to join us and who's joined us uh, by way of this apparatus called social media. We give you all the honor and the glory, and I thank you, Father. I thank you for the deliverance of myself and showing me how to be right and get it right in our relationship. I thank you for my wife, my lover, my best friend, and Yeshua's name. Amen.
the purpose God that God put a woman in a man's life is the correction of his soul. The purpose that God put a woman in a man's life, a mother in a man's life, is for the correction of his soul. And when it comes to a wife, you know, they got this new thing. You know, I know you like one of the show, but when I saw them putting, we have a sticky note marriage, a sticky note agreement, we began to lower some of the standards of commitment. And a wifey faith is wishy-washy faith. And so in this culture where we say, oh, that's, that's my wifey. You know, Oprah really said that for a lot, a long time. That's, that's a I don't want her to turn this off. I love you. <laughs> Listen, I'm saying that in a good way. I'm really? saying that in a bad way. I'm saying right. that Oprah, she doesn't have a sticky. I want, like I said, y'all ready for this? I'm not, I'm saying that there are some folks who, who caught that. Right. They got the paperwork. They went to the justice of the people. They done had the wedding. But the relationship in the marriage mm -hmm. does not have commitment. See, no, no piece of paper whether it is a sticky note on a television, on a refrigerator, or papers down there with the courthouse. Right. None of those things are the determining factor. It just simply means that we now have a contract. But at some point, you should, that contract, just like wearing your wedding ring or not wearing your wedding ring, has to not be bigger than your heart. And you're committed to each other. No, and that's the point because you said wedding ring, because I cannot find my wedding ring. But I also said to you, I add to that, when we, before we came up here, I said, you you are tattooed on my heart. And that that is what has to happen right, right. there. And right. when a man, loves, that's what I often say, you know, sometimes she says, well, how could he go back to this woman? Or how could he stay with this person? Because she was tattooed on his heart. No, really, I, I, you know, when I recently, this was recently the past couple of months, looked at that Hillary mm -hmm. documentary on, I think, that Hulu, Hulu maybe. Right. And they interviewed them, you know. Good for you all for going ahead and putting it out there for us. But they interviewed uh, Bill, and they didn't go soft on it. Right. They, at, I mean, they almost, it wasn't an accusation, but they left to me. No stone unturned, and they didn't get too far into their private business, but enough in the sexual in detail. I'm making that point because you just said something about somebody being tattooed on their body. Okay, I got you. You gave okay. the example of a person asking, "Why is this man doing X, Y, and Z? Why, why does he? Why does somebody creep? Let's just talk about somebody we all know, Bill Clinton. Okay, Bill Clinton, absolutely. The world knows that Bill Clinton stepped out on. Hillary, the world knows that he did it more than most people know that he did it more than one, and that was kind of his vice at times. How did they stay together? Listen, I'm not saying she should have stayed, I'm saying she did, and I accept her decision. I'm not so I'm not judging one way or the other, but the bottom line is the tattoo on the heart, they love each other. And I'm telling you, in this world, that is so hard, that is so hard for us to accept that. He said she was tattooed on his heart. Did he say that? He said. I thought, I he think, said. He said. I thought I heard him say something like that. Something he didn't use that word for something in there, and right. then one of her friends said people didn't understand it, but they really loved each other. And I just think that situation right there was bigger. I think Hilly was so confident. She's so calm. she's such a boss in her own right. We're not Republicans, Democrats, or liberals, or anything I, like I, that. These we're are just human talking beings about before they ever became somebody. And so we're not talking party. about his adultery. We'll probably get into that later. No, we're not. We're but not, the truth we're, is, but we're not talking about that at this moment. We're not uh, sanctioning that right now, just for those right. who would want to send emails. I have right. no judgments one way or the other. This is what she said. It's her story. We get to let her stick to her story and live her life the way she said she wanted to live. All right, let me get these notes. The role of a husband. I had my my grandmother told me, she said, you may be a husband in title, but marriage don't make you a husband. What makes you a husband is your commitment of your heart. The wedding. 
Right. Wait, just because you marry someone, you have that time. So that time doesn't make you a husband. You're going to have to become a husband. There you go. Nancy. And so the role of a husband, because I use the, the, the ancient scriptures as my, one of my models, and that was it makes it clear that if you are the, in your home, you are supposed to be in control of your attitude, control of your emotion, control of yourself. Because being in control of yourself allows you to be able to have an understanding of what your home is going through, what the people in your house is going through. And so I was just saying about being firm and having faith. And so it says this, let's go to the scripture, 1 Timothy 3, just really bless me. This is a faithful, trustworthy saying, if a man eagerly seeks the office of overseer, bishop, superintendent, if he desires an excellent task, he desires an excellent task, now an overseer must be born, uh, born, was born the husband of one wife, self-controlled, sensible, respectable, uh, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine, not a bully or quick tempered or hot or hot handed, but gentle and considerate, free from the love of money, not greed for wealth and in its inherent power, financially ethical. In red, I have, he must, he must manage his own household well, keeping his children uh, understand, in understanding and temperate uh, and with dignity. For if a man does not know how to manage his household, how will he take care of the church of God? And let me tell you why that's important. Because as I, I had no idea I would be in this position, but as I got into ministry and started working with men, they wanted to serve. And I said, you've got to be able to have a, 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 a peaceful home. You've got to be able to have a home that is subject to the leadership of God's spirit. Or you can't lead God's people. And it, does, it doesn't mean that you have no room to grow. Mm -hmm. It didn't mean that you, did, you don't have any arguments. It means that you understand that uh, 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 you are submitted to someone too. He must be a wife, but also a higher authority. Right. And so he must not be a new convert. So when you go to be a, a leader or you want to be, sometimes if we're not careful, we fall in love, but we think we're in love, but we have not really under, un, understood it. And so let me talk a bit about these new convert husbands. When the wrong was in the first, I always say the first five years, I want to do something so badly. For the first five years, let me tell you about the new convert husband. They 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 think running a house is controlling everything. So remember, when I you, am you, you wanted to to be, head of the household and you wanted to pay the bills. Listen, <laughs> everything late. These these new converts see this that leadership. It's the new convert husband. What am I saying? Listen, understand where you are, and listen, and understand this is. They haven't been a husband, you haven't been a wife, uh, 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 even if you're a new mom or, or a new parent, because we, we're still talking about relationship. It's all new, and you don't know how to parent this child, even if you raise your niece and your nephew and help. You have a general idea of how to deal with somebody, but then it gets, then you got to deal with this unique, this unique self, this special self. And, and, and you try to bring in all of those things that you read and all the things that you heard people say, and then you try to figure out, I'm doing everything they say, but it's not working. Because- Why are you being so mean to me? Because in the special. first five years, let me tell you something, you, might be, you want to be special. If somebody else told you you were special, oh, is that what you're doing? Get that thing out of here. Look at that. It, 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 it has a mean face when you see it. So That's this, how I feel. See this? These are the things that he might have to make his point. I had to learn how to deal with this. See, I used to be more serious than this. Now I used, this is the real me, right? And so I had a lot of different guards and different things that happened. That right like there will wreck me <laughs> back in the day. I'm telling you, sting for all my kids. But what, 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 what you new convert husband, mm -hmm. new convert husband, just listen, take, take, take it down some. I know you. I know you want to prove to her that you're capable of of, of just have being on top of everything. 
but there's just some things you have not experienced as a unit that's going to try you and it's going to shake you and things are going to happen. So this I said, don't make a new convert because you need time. You need time to deal with a new relationship. Many people I know who, when they first get married, they slow it down just a little bit because now you got somebody else in your life. Right. That's it. And I was looking at my next note because I was just thinking about when it, when I have here and it says he must be said not be a new convert and he must also understand that he has to keep a good reputation outside of the fellowship and be respectable. And so you got you cannot be a public success and a private failure. You know what I'm going to say a public success and a private failure. You've got to be a private success and a public success. You cannot mess around and be a private failure, but got everybody thinking you're running things. And then when the real truth come out, people understand your whole was mismatched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in that being the case, the reason when you get married or you make this commitment, we made a marital, and I'm talking about marriage. When you get married, faced with the problems of marital, financial, and family eternal problems, you and being fully committed at all times will cause you because it, when we when, when we say i do when a man says i do when i when i say all right i'm fully committed i had to come into the understanding of what that really meant because it will cause you when you are fully committed it will cause marriage will cause you to sink into depression and despair as a man, you think that you got it right because once that romantic phase is over, once the, what they call the honeymoon phase and all that is over, you'll look up and you'll be get, get depressed. And if y'all understand with the truth that you tell, I got depressed in hearing that truth. I got depressed in always hearing your understanding. Although I married and committed to you because I knew you were smarter than me, but I didn't like it when I started experiencing it. It took me years to say this of all those people who have known us for some time. It was probably last year when I really began to say this. We got to grow in each other's faith. I understood that, but I had not been in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I had. And so I kept feeling, I, I so, so today or maybe the past couple of years, I'm not as uh, frustrated about certain things in life because you have to grow in my space. If you live here, we live together. And you and you have to grow and, and, and life has to mature. Where are you gonna do that? That means that means you're growing pains and you're missing your marks. They're gonna happen in my space. And I have to learn how do I allow that and then not take it personally, not get scared out of my mind, because whatever you're going through, I don't know if it's gonna end because it'll last it more than a week, it'll last it more than two weeks, and you know, I can't control it and I don't know what to do. And so I had to. You know, I've been in this long enough, we've been together long enough for me to see, okay, we do grow in each other's space. And we actually grow. Mm -hmm. Growth actually happened. It, it didn't happen as fast as I wanted it to, but it did happen. And so now I have something. Now I can kind of relax in a certain way because I can really say from my heart, um, trouble does this, it doesn't last always. But sometimes people need time, more time than you want them to have to stop getting on your last nerve. When I had to, it's amazing. You had more to lose hooking up with me than I had to lose hooking up with you. And, but when I had to make that decision, I really had to go before God because I only wanted one. And I said, all right, this, I believe that this is the one. You are the one. I made a vow on the University of Maryland campus. God, if you bring me one, I don't want to be with a bunch. I just want one. And once I made that commitment to marry you, men don't want to make commitments because married to a woman is a man maker. Marriage is a man maker. Marriage will make you get your roots in order because it makes you visit areas within yourself that you would not capture if you were not committed. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. This is why the establishment, the, the, the former powers uh, to be, um, made sure women didn't have jobs mm -hmm. and didn't work because they didn't want, 
the challenge of a woman showing up as her whole self because it was going to be a different kind of man maker. Men just wanted to, to be a man because they was able to tell somebody, you know, I'm the only one that brings the money home. I, I work, my wife take care of 10 kids, mm -hmm. wash clean, and you and you think you're the boss in the house? Mm -hmm. Please, please. But guess what? <laughs> For so long, folks think if you was at home doing that, and because you didn't leave the house for eight hours, or so, and then bring money in, then none of that stuff counts. And that wasn't a job. But this is why we all go together, whether it's this small or in a community, because guess what? The truth comes in, and after a while, you can't deny that truth anymore. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you a question, brother. Do you want peace? Do you want peace? The reason I ask you, do you want peace? If so, let her do her job. If you want peace, let her do her call. Let her do who she is if you want peace. And when I say let her, that means that as we keep going, don't interfere with certain energies and your energies because you want it a certain way. And, and, and let me say this because th that, that kind of felt like something. Um, in this sense, for so long, we didn't know our job. We just had a role. You know, we just had a role. And so women could say too much, but that was disrespectful. You know, and I don't think that, I think that when we know better, we do better. And I know that once you knew better, you did better. So I learned that from you. But for so long, mm -hmm. you know, let her do her job. Okay, well, who, what, what's the qualifications? Who, can I clarify? In that, that descriptive can I, position. Can okay. I clarify? Mm -hmm. I, this is why how, this is how I became a student of the Hebrew language and the alphabet. Right. Because I was doing my best to follow. Had I known the man who finds, the, who can find a virtuous woman, mm -hmm. had I understand to not, that's so, when this I say, let her do her job. But I want you, when I, when I say let her do her job, I know what the qualifications of a woman is. And so when I learned that she was, when he said, who can love a virtuous woman? And then I studied the original language, understood the, the letters, it meant a woman of valor. It was a military term. A, and valor, a, a virtuous woman, and a, a woman of virtue, that was a military term. They said, this man has virtue. And so she had virtue. And when I understood that you are the Shekhael, that is the one who comes, the warrior woman who comes when I'm in danger. You, and if you look at what the culture was like, if the man went out to hunt or she went out to hunt, they had to, somebody had to stay home and protect the home and make sure everything was held down. And if he went out, she would have to have discernment to be able to say, wait a minute, your father's not back yet. I'll be back. And women have been holding it down like that, not understanding that that's in, in them. And this is why it's so hard that you want somebody to appreciate it mm -hmm. because you think you're just doing this uh, randomly. No, no, you're built. You're built to, to hold things down a certain way. Me spiritually uh, to hold things. And, it, and it's an honor. It's just that someone dishonors that, again, because of the world. Listen. And they hurt your sixth sense. But go ahead. There you go. This is why I'm telling you, these people threw their wigs across the room at Black Panther when we saw those women dressed up like, well, just took the wig off and just threw it across the room. Because for once, you're, you're seeing something that makes sense to you. That's it. And you're seeing these strong women, and you're seeing these women as the ones that was guarding, they were the ones that was, guard, was, was guarding the man. And so that's similar to what you're saying in terms of that level of protection. And, 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 and more than a few of us know that, you know, we became protected. But when, when we don't know what that means and we don't see it in a good light, we, it's not something for anybody to take advantage of. When you don't see it in a good light, then guess what I look like? I feel like your mother. Because now I'm in your business. I feel like your mother. But no, no, no. It, you, I feel like your mother in those terms because that is also, as a woman, that is also the attribute your mother had 
except it has been so displaced for so long right. that it has lost its true value. And I'm hoping, Ron, in what you're going to share today, that it will bring true value back to that thing that has gotten that nasty label. Shalom, shalom, buy it. Peace in the home. Shalom, buy it. Peace in the home equals attending to her needs. Peace in your home equals attending to her needs. I'm not saying taking her out just to get dinner or, you know, attending, finding out what she needs to be happy, to be satisfied, and attending to her needs. And we, we will delve into it. And when you are single, it feels like that's a, a, a it's a yoke. But what you have to learn that if you're going to have peace, you're going to have to learn how to attend to someone's needs. You got something? I just smiled because I, I heard a long time ago we were doing something. We were in a different space in ministry, and the one was going through something, and he left, and I saw the message, and he was the message. Y'all shot the sheriff, but you ain't shoot the deputy. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Listen, that wasn't even me saying that was in Central lower. High School. Yeah. I, I wasn't even suggesting that I was lower. It is this, 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 this thing, this thing that says, listen, it ain't over until as long as I'm standing, he's standing. As long as he's standing, I'm standing. And let me say this: when I said the woman, the Isha, Isha Hael, you just showed it. That was my point. <laughs> when the man is in danger, I be by me being such a giving person a loving person and me doing that kind of stuff i just kept giving and then i started getting wounded Listen, hurt. you are an empath in the space empath meaning empathy times twenty thousand. empath in the space of sociopath psychopath that's how i study psychopath and sociopath. that just had been crushed by their former life all of us had a little someone we all good now hallelujah holy spirit the power of god is is real, but the struggle was also real too. But you were in path in the space of people who just needed to take, and I'm not saying any of this in a bad way anymore. I've grown past that, mm -hmm. but just needed something because when you grow up and nobody, the people who you needed compassion from didn't show you compassion, you can try to go and uh, uh, drain somebody's well because you're constantly trying to get that thirst quick because again, you've been thirsty so, so long. And when that went as an empath, the person with empathy, I didn't know some of the things I had to learn. I had to learn to love men. Uh, I, I love men, but I really had to learn how to love men. And then I understood because my heart could go out for women, and I, I there's some uh, I understand some stuff in my own heart. I was able to say, hmm, this is rough. But you got up that day and said, y'all shot the sheriff, you shoot the but devil. you ain't it shooting ain't the devil. devil. And, I was, and I was in the, in the back somewhere sitting down crying while you were saying that because you knew what I was going through and what I was feeling. And she got up there and you you put it down. And you know, it, it, it is. It, 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 everyone uses their gift. Everyone, did. we end up all having to grow in each other's spaces. And I, 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 I'm sure that, that more than a few of us will say, uh, if I knew then what I knew now, things would be different. But if I did anything different back then, I wouldn't become the person that God called me to be. So, you know, that's all that get us wrong. But, you know, it is absolutely, it, it is growing together. Whether it's right here, when you get a relationship, and it's real, and it's true, and it's a commitment, and you all in, listen, you're not going to get all good. You want, you want to meet somebody's weaknesses. I mean, you just thought. There you go. I put up the peace sign because peace comes when you destroy the authority that establishes the chaos. Hebrew and Hebrew, uh, and the original, the peace, peace comes when you destroy the authority that establishes the chaos. And when I learned that peace was not just peace and love, or peace was not just a feeling, peace was warfare. Mm -hmm. Peace meant in order for us to have peace, even right now, for us to have peace, even when we do the teaching. Sometimes it can be a little, it could be a little rough before teaching, or there could be misunderstandings or whatever the case may happen. But we have to make sure we're out constantly at war with love. And in, in, when I say at war, we are in love, and peace comes when we destroy the authority that has established the chaos 
in our relationship. And that means we have to be present enough to mm-hmm. know what the chaos is and to recognize that it's chaos mm-hmm. and not go into uh, avoidance and just and just live it in, in a mess. We, we, we want better than that. When I studied the language, and you're so right, I learned that to con, T-I-K-K-U-N, it means, it's, it's a Hebrew word, the correction of the soul. And so in the context of marriage, if there's going to be a peaceful home, when God put you in my life, you, it was for the correction of my soul, my mind, my will, and my, my, my spirit, my body, for me to learn how to surrender, how to, sub, to, how to submit. And I wasn't going to just have a peaceful home by quoting scripture, talking about I'm the man of the house, and this is what I want to do, and you need to surrender to that. And so in that being the case, I've accepted that he who hates correction is stupid. And you don't get on my nerves anymore like you used to. (laughs) Why? Because I do not mind being corrected. Why? Because if I hate you telling me truth about myself, then I'm stupid, which means I will not be able to make it. So so let me say this. I remember reading from this this article I saw some time ago, so I don't remember where I got it from, but I do have it. And it says, um, I mean, I don't know the, I can't cite the person, but it says it's talking about a man, a man when he's called a male, the Hebrew name for male, and what it really meant, and it, and it's purpose, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you this so that you understand all that Deron just said about the woman being in there to correct his soul, mm-hmm. the female that is. Right. It says his, his, his design function is to remember who Yahweh is, what Yahweh requires, and then act on his knowledge. Likewise, he is the one that acts on behalf of his wife and children. A male passes his knowledge of creator through his visible service to his children and they receive the name of their father. In a restored state, the male remembers the commandments of Yahweh. That is, he keeps in God's the word of Yahweh. Mm-hmm. But from creation, there was no male found who was certain. Well, I don't want to say that part. I'll just say he keeps in God's the word of Yahweh. So what does the wife, the, the female, do when they are connected? He was created specifically to remember Yahweh's instruction. What the E does, or the Azure Connector, right? Connector, whatever. The, the, the this person we call a helper, what she does is she confronts him. I hold him accountable. Listen, no different than this. You get the word, you get the word, then you in my space, you talk and you instruct, right? As a being made in the image of God, because you are a speaking being, you're not just a communicating being, because other beings and animals communicate, but we speak, right. we speak. And so this is this is the simple way of saying this, is that when you give me your word, I'm supposed to hold you to your word. That is what's made in the image of God. If God gave us his word and we're back on his word, the reason why we, we trust this God is because he keeps his word. Right. And so what she does is that correcting piece isn't that I'm telling him what to do, I'm telling you what you told me. Right. I'm giving you back. If you give me some sperm, I'm going to give you a baby. You give me a word, I'm going to give you some fruit from that word. I, it, it, I am to give you back what you have given me. Give her some oatmeal and raisins and some uh, uh, brown sugar, and she'll give you back some oatmeal, cook- cookies. oatmeal cookies. I'm just telling you. <laughs> so so what, what's the bottom line? Let me Listen, we keep you all accountable. And, and, and but the world has you saying things, holding on to the dark side of that, versus being reminded to keep your word. If you could be reminded to do that, let me say this before you listen, listen. Just, I, I share with Deron, right? Deron, listen, you need to do some broadcast from home. I didn't say me, and I didn't introduce that to him. This he was already doing certain things to reveal to me that. He needed a change of space mm-hmm. in order to um, be as expressive as he needed to be. There's just something that he wanted to say freely. 
we tried, that you don't want to stay in a church setting because it's not the appropriate place to people. So guess what? But what you have to say, people need to hear. So go to a place and say it. I want, I got past, you need to watch your mouth. We already got past that. What he was doing was in him to do. So we talked about it for the longest time. Ron, let's just set up this room right here. Mm -hmm. It was just for him, though. Let's just set up some space. Get your little iPad out and do your thing because that's when you are the best you. When you can, when you can say what the Creator wants you to say to a world that is misbehaving or a world that's off course, and you can't say it. You need to speak the language of certain folk, and you can't say it in, in a certain environment. So what am I saying to you? I took all the things that he was saying, his ups, his downs, the feelings he had, and gave this back to him. Why? Have you thought about this? Have, have you thought about doing this? See, if you let me keep you accountable, mm -hmm. if you allow me to do my job, and, and, and that is to give birth to things, to carry things and to give birth to things, I will hand you back. I'm not trying to steal from you. To steal from you is to steal from me. I will hand you back something in a more mature state than that seed that you deposit. But if you are caught up in the world's view and cues and viewpoint that, that says, uh, you throwing it back in my face. I'm not throwing it back in my face. I'm reminding you of who you are and what you said. And when you said it, that's what you believe at the time. Then the world came in, you got disappointed, you felt you fell dead, you down, you got some hit, and you stopped believing. I'm not here to make you believe in yourself. That ain't my job. Mm -hmm. I only believe what you told me. I, and this is why the wrong with people want to be power couples for the sake of being power couples. Sometimes it, it gets twisted because now you just think you can make somebody position. I can't appoint somebody to a place when, when, when a creator has already decided something for their life or 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 created them to have a certain kind of light and shine in a certain way. But what I can do is listen to you and then give you back all of those seeds that you threw out there one one way or other. You built me up. And again, I'm saying this wrong for any of you out there who said, you know, she's throwing this in my face. Well, maybe you feel bad because you ain't keep your word. But if you will go remember that it was your word and when you said it, you meant it. And if you can work to get back to what you said you were, instead of throwing it up and don't want nobody to remind you of the challenges that you may have to, to, to walk in it or to get back to who you said you were. Your words, you were just doing. your words, I have to be able to trust your words. Let me make this point. Power of life and death is in the tongue. The, the, the light, the, the, the spoken word has the ability to break mountains in the soul. Although you were very assertive, what got on my nerves was your tone. But it wasn't you being mean tone. It was you were correct in what you were saying. And I didn't want to receive some of those corrections. Because you can write people to sing, how are you? Everything you doing well? I don't sing. I don't like singing. I sing to little kids, though. I do. And I, I'll sing to a hurt person. What I mean by that, I'll use that certain tone. But most of the time, I'm not speaking in that tone. Because I talk this to men, but I still want to put what I wrote this. I wrote this years ago. Mm -hmm. You cannot give into her bark. I told brothers, you can't give her, I said, you can't give into her bark, meaning you cannot be offended by her tongue because it's based on her hurt sometimes. And sometimes you may think she's all words and no bite, but I want you to understand her bite comes in the form of words. The way that a woman is able to affect your life is through her ability to say words that would affect your soul. This is why people, some you are able to say, both you and then your 
Talita said the same thing. The reason I started doing this is not because y'all said when you sit here and do this, you're a different person. You're free. And so I said, I'm going to follow. Why? Because I had to be able to trust your words. Now, why did I say that? Proverbs 14, 1. I learned a wise woman builds her house on the foundation of godly precepts and her household thrives. But the foolish one who lacks spiritual insight tears it down with her own hands by ignoring, ignoring godly principles. And because you did not ignore godly principles, I had to say, I know you're not trying to hurt me. And at one point I thought you were, but then I could not be simple. You disrespected me. I had to, and I'm going to keep, we're going to get to that, but I had to get to a point to say, listen, you get to be who you are and say what you need to say. And because if you're foolish, you tear down your partner with your words, as opposed to being able to put them in such a style or a, 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 a order that would bring peace. You know what I did some time ago is that I had to look at it and I had to realize that from a, from a tribal standpoint, that a lot of those people are already related. You know, if, 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 if I use the Bible, those tribes, they, yeah, married, yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. they married somebody from a tribe. Mm -hmm. they, they, they had some bloodline relation, okay, oftentimes. So what I had to tell myself when I was about to go overboard in one of these areas, I had to say, Jill, treat him like your brother. Because every time you treat him like your husband only, then you have lots of expectations and he doesn't get to be a man like your brother would be to be. And he has to cover so many things in your life because again, this is just this 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 is the the, the script that we were handed for so long. It's changing now, thank God. But we were handed and we were trying to work with a script that needed to be challenged and it needed to be changed when it came to who who women um what, and what they were expected to, do, to be. But what, what kept me, and I'm not saying I never fussed, cussed, got mad, hard, or raised my voice. I didn't lose it. He didn't lose it. There wasn't no physical fight. But they, there were times when, yes, it was, it, we, we were both fed up. But I, it was I, minimal. But I had to make sure that at the end of the day, it, 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 and eventually I got to the place where I did not want to destroy any of God's creation because I figured if he created you like he created me, if, if I want him to protect me from you, then guess what? He's going to protect you from me. And I didn't want to be on the other side of that kind of reaping his own. And so I stopped for a minute and said, how do I how do I deal with this person as a person? Not as a possession. Because husband and wife and marriage, again, these things get challenged and they're changing and I'm telling you, we're going to have a better world if, if the Lord turns, we're gonna have a better world because of it. But again, um, I had to look at him another way. And I just learned. I remember we read this, and I, I couldn't understand why I put this word down. But when you were talking, it just made sense. It says her words became her weapons of relationship destruction. When I began to study women and study their character, their words, and all these different things, because. Sometimes I, I would say, Jill, just because you don't hear me say anything in these heated discussions and arguments or whatever, I said, I got to drive with that for two, three days. And those words just don't disappear. And listen, listen, let, 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 let me help these women get their voice, right? Mm -hmm. Ron, the hard thing, these are all the things that we have to cross off of that old script, right? Mm -hmm. And it was somehow we believe that men didn't have feelings. Hmm. Because it seemed that when we was hurt by you or our feelings was hurt, then all of a sudden you could get over it and go on about your life. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, 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 interpreted as you don't care. Right. It was interpreted as, listen, you got tunnel vision. I'm, my, I'm, I'm more peripheral. It, it, it wasn't interpreted that I, I speak all kinds of language. I recognize all kinds of language, body language, um, verbal, audible, uh, 
I, I, I recognize all of this. So I had so many ways of looking at this thing. And, and somehow I wanted you to be able to tap into what's happening in the world with the same senses that I had. And you didn't. So you didn't seem as sensitive and as caring. But I put that label on you. I put, and this is why I did when I taught Lord, he gets on my nerve. Mm -hmm. That was the basis of Lord, he gets on my nerve. Because I couldn't, I kept trying to get something. But again, what, what did I have to, what belief did I have to, false belief, bad, bad juju that I had to get past and get out of my space was telling myself, you didn't have any feelings. And that's why I could say all. That's why I could go on and on and feel like you would just go on with your day. Because that's what I thought you did with me. And what and I, I try to explain, teach some people to understand this about men, when we, when they call us dogs sometimes, when an animal is hurt, especially a dog is hurt, he will go and lick his wound. Uh -huh. A dog or, or she, a dog will go off to themselves and hurt, and he will, uh, especially a male dog, and he'll hurt in private. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And because I did not have the skills, you had communication skills. You had a community that was built around you. I, I, I saw, um, I think Dick Gregory was saying, I, I think it was Dick Gregory, he, he taught me, he said, if a woman is on a park bench crying, people are not gonna walk past her. They'll stop, three, four, five different people will stop, are you okay? If a man is sitting on that park bench crying, People are actually going a further circumference around them because we just don't believe that males have emotions. And we don't, and, and nobody wants to see a man break down. But like I said, things are changing mm -hmm. and they're challenged and they're changing. And women use a lot more words than men do. So again, we're in touch with things that they may not be as in touch with. And I labeled it, which means I judged it in a dark way. Rather than just that he's he was, he's different. That's what going gets my nerve. It's about the differences between men and women. And once I realized that we were actually created and built with different missions, even though we had a lot of values that we did share, but sometimes we had different missions. We know that because we know when it comes to having kids, we know the part you play, we know the part we play. But I, I didn't take that kind of truth into other parts of my life. Right. So listen, your words, and I learned this about. I would, because a lot of men would say, why is she so angry? Or why is she, she going so hard all the time? Or what is happening? Because, I, and I learned that often, especially in this world, because men took advantage of females and overran them, bullied them, used them, uh, abused them, all kinds of stuff. A woman had to learn she could not physically beat that man. So she had to learn how to use words to be able to move him and also to be able to protect herself. And so I had to learn when you were talking and find out, are, and you have to ask yourself too, I had to say, is she protecting or is she talking? Is she talking or protecting? Sometimes I was trying to figure out, are you trying to protect something or were you talking to me? Protect to you or protect me? You. Well, sometimes, again, again, we had some bad, scripted, and old information that needed to be challenged and changed. Mm -hmm. And so we had to get all that stuff out of our system. And for the longest time, I, I written this on my paper when we were talking. And it says, you know, at some point, it felt like a problem. I didn't get tired of saying yes to you. I got tired of saying no to you. And, 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 and I would you say this way, what I'm doing, it's not against you, it's for me. Right. But any but but that old script says that's that selfish and that I didn't care. And I had all of those voices and labels, even though in my heart I'm saying, can I just can I have a little something? Because when we had our home depot runs like we talked about earlier today, and I'll put it out right now, when we went to Home Depot, if Let's do this. Sharper image is closed now. But when I went to Sharper Image, I was really excited about what I saw, all of that. And I could just be all over the place. Uh, 
that was my area in terms of I was a gadget person. When we went into Home Depot, you wanted all these colors that you've chosen. All, I was sitting here looking at that lamp and looking at the whole house, looking at this zebra picture over here, looking at all these different things. Because when we went on a, went, went to Africa one day, we said, we like this. I was, yeah, I was in a resort, not resort, but yeah, some kind of, I'm going to call it resort. It was a safari. Right. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I like the feel. You know, and and, 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 and and this is this this is why why the new comfort thing is so hard. This is why growing with each other is so hard, especially depending on what kind of household you came from come from, especially if you, neither one of you were already set mm -hmm. and then you didn't have the the, the make those financial decisions. I think by, I, I thought about this when we were talking. Um, 2008, I think I had the kitchen done. Yeah, I was getting, that's what I was going to go to. Okay, so. She took the kitchen, got yeah. it done, because well, well, I, I was the man I was in Home Depot. Keep going. Right. I, I furnished, I did major pro pro projects when he was away. And I'm talking about bathroom renovation, <laughs> and he just came back and saw it, because I had to take it. I, I had to take it, and I felt that I deserved it, too. And I said, if he's going to leave me, then that's what he's going to do, but I can't live like this. But I tell you something that, that when I thought about when we had the kitchen done. Now it's been many, many years, but when we did it, we got our appliances were high in the fly. Now, when I was looking before he went with me, he wanted me to go to Home Depot. Before you went with me, you know, he was looking at tag, price tag. And then one day we went to say, we went ahead. into a, a store and he saw this thing, this, 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 this. Stove top thing that had a stove, it had a grill and a deep fryer in it. It was not cheap. He did not blink <laughs> in saying, I don't to know the if guy, you're telling the truth. Oh, I know I am. To say to the guy, I want that. Now, listen, I could. The silly part of me wanted to get really mad to say, um, you know, when it was me, <laughs> you wasn't that happy about it. But the sensible part of me said, since we're in this department, Jill, don't be a fool. Don't make that your issue. I want that refrigerator right there. <laughs> Give me that stove right there. <laughs> Let me catch him while he is on his trip, his wonderful trip in his flight. Guess what? Because by this time, in order for him to get that, if he gonna say no to me, he gonna have to say no to himself. And I knew he wasn't. And that and that weekend, when we talk about said earlier today, cooperate with the universe. It was on that weekend when we were away on vacation that you did it and you had told me you had gotten a house, you were doing some things and I didn't know what was happening and you were talking to the uh, uh, contractor or something and when I figured out what was going on and you told me what was happening and you didn't say it mean or anything, I, I got so upset. And because, as I said earlier, when we did the service earlier today, I couldn't tell the whole story. I had gotten so bothered, Jill, that one, here you were moving ahead, not saying anything to me. And then I got bothered because I understand how much of a butt I was being. And I could not overcome it. And then when I went downstairs to get myself together, and I said, Deron, what are you going to do? You don't, you're not going to mess up your, your vacation time, you off time, because she decided, and you had the funds to do it, so what's the problem? And I said, you know what? And I came upstairs, and we sat there, and I and it didn't all go well at one point, because I came up with a little hump, huff, not awesome huff, and finally I looked at you, and I said, Jill, it's time to cooperate with the universe. And, and let, me, let, let me say this to you. That wasn't just what I did for me. Deron has an office in one of the bedrooms that he was out of town. When he came home, that office was done. Sure was. See, he, but he was my fear, and it still is. I said to him, I said, Deron, you are anxious person. This, this wasn't just me. Meaning, 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 you have a certain kind of energy and drive. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, right now, if, 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 if we fix some of these things that need to be fixed, I'm telling you, you, you are going to be more creative. Mm -hmm. I just want you to be more creative. 
I, I didn't do this because I wanted to show off to people. Right. Most people have not did. I didn't even let people come in my house to show it off. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, I think I had one or two events here. And then I stopped that. Right. But my point, Ron, is this: this I understood something. Why is that important for you to know? If that happened in two thousand eight, I haven't bought another thing. It's in, in some of the some of it was before. No, this was before two thousand eight because Selena graduated two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this back to two thousand. Say two. 2001, we were here. I'll take this back to about 2004, Five. 2005. Five. Why am I telling you that story? I haven't bought any more furniture. I haven't replaced my appliances. I didn't do this because I was I was caught up that I was a part of that designer thing. Mm -hmm. It was listen for the work that we do. We got to come home and have some things in order. We got to come home and have some things in order. So this really was, it was about that and it continues to be about that. And guess what? I haven't bought anything new since then. Some of this stuff was was, was in, in different spaces. Why I said, because that wasn't my my, 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 my mode. It was, it was for peace. Why? So that we can do what we do. So it still takes me back to that person that, that says, listen, you're in here with a makeshift this, that, and the other, trying to, trying to write plays, trying to do all the work you're trying to do, trying to reach the masses. Let me create a space so that you can think and do what you want to do, so that the world can be um, improved by what you were sitting here to do. That's not a power couple mindset. Even when we did, I'm teaching with him right now, but when I told him to teach here, I didn't include myself. It just happens this way mm -hmm. for some other reason. But I didn't say you need to come home and you need to do this because I want us to be a power couple. No. We only got a couple power. No. And you know the other thing is, I learned Little Rivion said something to me years ago. Little Rivion Johnson. He said, when you and Miss Jill teach, I really like it. He said, because if I understand so many other things. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I said, hmm. And then before you know it, I had I heard other people would say the same thing. Because and what we didn't know is that we complement each other. And what we didn't know is that you have certain gifts and I have certain gifts. But when our fire comes together, we're able to devour stuff. The reason I'm holding this stand right here is you ordered this for me. I just got it, what, last it night? It came today. It came today. Yeah, About today. That's why I was so tired after service because I'm sick. I couldn't figure out what it was. I get up early. But she bought this and had it brought here, and it's a stand. Because I told her, you know, I guess you tell me what made you get this stand. You didn't tell me anything. I, I That's just what know. today. But what made you get it? Because I just know it's the same reason I did the office. It's the same reason mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, 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 I said do this and come here. It's the same reason. When you are connected, and, and I'm, 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 I'm connected, but I'm, I'm equal, but not identical. Okay. Right. So I, I just knew it. As a matter, the other thing I got was a remote control thing to, 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 to do. It. Why did I do it? Because I want you out there doing your sets, doing mm -hmm. your posts for Facebook with your costume, you know, right. in, 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 with mask and all those things on. And you got to step up and push the button. And also, um, you have to take those bigger um, stands. stands and drag them from this room to out the door. And sometimes they got left outside the door. Over mm -hmm. with at the time when your, your strip was different, you know, you would say, "I just don't feel like doing all of that right now." Right. So guess what I said? You know what? That'll be easy for him to take. And all you got to do is put a keep a little table, right. a little outside table. Nobody will see it, and he will be able to do the same thing. And he won't have to use all of his strip on moving stuff and he can use that strip on helping somebody else who's in darkness coming to the light. Right now. That's I, why. Right now I put it on this thing because I said I'm getting tired of moving this thing, doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I told you when we sat down and you came downstairs, I said, listen, I want you to know I'm really thankful for this because it's gonna make my life so much easier. And this is it. Listen, that's what love is. Love, love is we don't we love 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 does no harm. 
to his neighbor. That's why I said I had to begin to see you as a brother and like a neighbor, like a person, and not like somebody who I kind of own, who we have a contract. I gotta say something. I ain't going to the next As a brother, while we were in we were in Georgia one time. That's when I did my first facts because I came to a conclusion that I was mean to you. And I told my friend, I said, man, I'm fasting because I'm not a giving person. And he said, Ron, you give all the time. I said, not with my wife. I'm mean. I'm argumentative. I, I'm critical. And I said, I had to be honest. I'm treating my male friends better than my, fem my female best friend. Right. That's why that ownership is so ugly. As it, we talking about, would you say that? I'm just saying because this is why people treat their friends better. Right. Because they don't that obligation and, and, and what again that old script. Listen, when you when you get ready today, tomorrow, from this point on, you get this broadcast and you get ready to do something, ask yourself, am I working from an old script? Is there is there a better script out here I can work with? Is there more is it some is it is it better than this right here? Because everything we're saying is that we were devoted to that old script because we didn't know any better. Negative sentiment override is the weekend I learned that. Before I was, I had started fasting, I was like the fourth day into the fast. And this is the first time he told me, I want you to do a strict liquid fast. I had never done that like that. And when I said, when I said, okay, I got to take responsibility for my behavior. And I said, why am I so critical? Why can I, why am I, why, what is happening? And that's when I learned the term negative sentiment override. I could take a situation and make it negative. I, it was override. I could have a negative sentiment about things because of my past, because of some of my upbringing, some of the things I experienced, and I would bring that in the room with you. And in bringing in the room, I use criticism and making a bunch of comments. And I have one here, what's making you miserable, son? What's making you miserable, brother, is your observant, observant, it's not all, let's read it. What's making you miserable, brother man, is it not all observant, negative? I'm just trying to help you out, comments. So, what's make what was what is making me miserable? What was making me miserable is that I could very observative, but then I would now want to point it out to you, talk about it, and not only do that, I would begin to give you too many comments and would destroy your happiness. And listen, nothing overrides criticisms and comments. And I realized that being so, now there's a difference between correction or say, can you deal with this? But then God had to show me, Deron, you're too critical, man. And we think because we're giving advice, we think because we point, I'm just trying to help you out. You are shutting her down. And let me add to this, you know, sometimes when you get home, You've been you've been so many for so many different faces in the street, even with your friends. When you come home, you keep saying, when I come home, I just want to be real. Mm -hmm. And okay, well, hopefully, while you're being real, you know that you're kind of real, get real nasty <laughs> and real rocky, you know, and that you would deal with the fact. Okay, if, if if you're being real, you like that. If you don't like that, then go find enough. Go find the other the, 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 the real you that's not showing up. Cause there's a real you in there too, mm -hmm. another a, 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 a better you in there, mm -hmm. and so I think that you know people. I've heard people say At all day long, I got to put a face on somebody. When I come home, I don't want to put a face on. Okay, well don't put a face on. But you are putting a face on. You put an ugly face on. Right. And 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 you you gave all of all of you know. With, with, with the world needed and their satisfaction and you come home and then your family he's hammered each time I criticize I'm saying you're not perfect in my eyes mm -hmm. when I study who you are and study what you bring to the table each time I criticize you I'm saying to you you're not perfect in my eyes 
I must realize each time, and he must realize each time he criticizes her, you upset her balance. Mm -hmm. Each time, if everything, if I'm pointing this out, that out, pointing this out, look at that, that out, I'm upsetting the balance. And you cannot be considerate, and she cannot be considerate of me or you in any way, shape, or form when you're putting her down. If I'm putting you down, if I'm talking to you, but I'm saying it in such a way to make you feel like a piece of lint when it's over. So that you, so I can move you with my word, so I can get done what I need to get done, then you're not going to be able to be, and you couldn't be considered of me in any way. And when you're doing that, what I realized, Jill, I wasn't going against you. I was going against God. That's why I said, bring God into your arguments. Because doing that with you, I was pointing out God's creation and the flaws or whatever I thought I needed. Only was if a mirror of what we're going inside, brothers. It's how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why the scriptures say that a man, when he, there you go, you can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you say it. You I'll comment. That would be I got you. I got you, baby. Even Ephesians 20, I don't even know what it is, 528. Ephesians 528. Even so, Husbands should love their wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. Okay, so let me stop right there. So you know why you feel like that? Because this is what he loves himself. Well, what are you talking about? You, are you asking him? No, I'm telling you. Okay, go ahead. Right. right. See, it says, even as husbands should love their wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. Right. Or, or being their own, their own self. And so with somebody who's loving you like you love himself, She's loving you. He's loving you like he loves himself. He's telling you, and I say you got to put out with it, but he's telling you what kind of trouble we can. I, I, I get what you're saying, but you got to make it clear. Okay. Even as husbands should love their wives, should love their wives. So what, what, what he's saying is this, this is, this is, here's the marker. However much you love yourself, you should love me as much as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you think, oh, they love themselves. You can tell he loves himself. He's buying himself all this stuff. No, he don't love himself. He buys himself all that stuff because he doesn't love himself. He's buying himself all that stuff because he's not satisfied with stuff. And he's hoping that those getting all those gadgets and all those toys is going to fix something that's broken inside. That's it. And so, yeah, they're going to love you. That's what he said. So, so you should love a woman as you loved yourself, your own body, your, your, your own self. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Many of people out here with a whole lot of changes since that change since that was written, especially for black folks. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of changes that was written. And so um, a man trying, he's trying to love himself, but, but, but he ain't holy. He who loves his wife, he who loves his own wife loves himself. There you go. See? And so I had to time. learn, what'd you say? I spent all that time saying that. <laughs> okay. So let me say what I say. He who loves his own wife loves himself. I had to learn if I wasn't able to love you then I wasn't able to love myself. If I'm not, and he who loves his own wife loves himself. I had to make sure that I loved you. And if I showed you love, then I was also loving myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I said, so the body, I got the love. This is my body. You get it? Mm -hmm. Keep going. And not in a possessive way. Right. But guess what? If you're going to destroy the creator's wonderful work right here, mm -hmm. how you, how are you going to bring more value over here than you have over there? With the same work of the crazy, you shake my hand, I'm shaking my hand. Mm -hmm. So if you if you don't feel uh, 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 grounded in, in, in a certain way about yourself in terms of how well, not just how well you create, but, but, but who lives inside you, what you're capable of, um, who you can become. If you, if, you, if you think that all those doors are closed, then you're going to be grumpy. Let me just say this right here. Say it right here. Her unpleasant behavior is an indication that something is askew. Your unpleasant behavior in the house is, or in our relationship, is an indication that something is askew, something is off. 
This is why I came up with the saying, how is the weather? What is today's weather like? People ask me, what is the weather like? This is very good, very good way to open the door so I can feel safe and safe. How did that help you? How it helped, the way it helped me is that I, that, that you let me know by asking the question mm -hmm. that you wanted to know how I really felt. And if, if I had to try to get you to see by drama right. that it's not a good day, then that wasn't good for you, and it was stressful for me too. Because sometimes you may be quiet. And then if you're trying to figure it all out, you're as a man, I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. And I had to get to the point to say, how's the weather? And if you said cloudy, I said, okay, but I wouldn't say, oh, it's cloudy, I better be careful. No, that let me, I needed to know how am I going to dwell with you according to knowledge? How am I going to dwell with you according to love? How am I going to dwell with you and give you the proper energy you need? If you say it's sunny, then I know how to deal. If you say it's really cloudy today, then I know I need to ride low. And so, and, and so let me tell you how, 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 how some dysfunction within me can mess that up. Oh. How it, it would mess that up. Because, see, it, I didn't want you, when I said it's cloudy, I didn't want you to withdraw. Right. So if I say to you, it's cloudy, then you're going to withdraw, and then I'm going to feel rejected. Although you're not doing that against me, you're doing it for you because there's nothing you can do mm -hmm. but sit around. And I used to be that person who wanted you to sit down with me and be miserable with me. Mm -hmm. But we had things to do. Right. And so eventually I grew up and I got out of that. But for a period of time, I, even, even that gesture from something of trying to help, I, I, I was able to, to even money that up. And I'm saying that for this reason, because prior to all of that, when he was being grumpy and he was being mean, you know, I didn't just, he didn't just start doing thoughtful things and I, I just sprung into action. No, no, no. It was a slow walk. Sometimes I was still rocking. And he just had to be consistent. I also had to do it. I had to make it so bad. He just had to be <laughs> consistent in doing what he thought. This is what it means when it says, husband, wash her. You know why it tells you to wash her? Because she needs to be washed. There's something there. Wash her with that, the, the word. which is the, the message and the, and the love and the truth. And you hold to it. And when you see that I'm in danger or I'm going through, it's not an opportunity for you to say, I tried. Or, you know, I know what's happening. You're about to come on your period. And, okay, you know, right. and, and because that was what was said in the, in the beginning, thank God it's not too far to me. You can't be saying that. Because <laughs> anytime Eric Lyle gives you correction, this is the rough Eric Lyle. Not this is the one right now. He just screams to me. But listen, this. This is what women don't want. I don't care. You don't mean anything. See, this ain't number two hands. I'm telling you, this says so much. Mm -hmm. You don't mean anything to me. I, I can I can take you or leave you. And all you're doing is this. I can read so much into that. And so I I I I eventually came out. Why am I saying that to you? I'm telling you, if you have come in the room to heal somebody, do your best not to let their 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 their, their demons. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, don't sell out your babies. Because if you hold and you keep light on long enough, I'm telling you, they they'll be here. I did. I did, and so did he. Right. But I had to keep the love of the light of love on, even when he wasn't as receptive as I wanted him to be when I at my judgment. In your service to God, and or it points out something that needs correcting within. And so if she says it's cloudy or if there's some unpleasant stuff going on, I have to come to a conclusion. You are my mirror. A woman is a man's mirror. And a sister must be consistently honest, a consistently honest and mirror worthy. Meaning you've got to carry yourself where you're mirror worthy. When I look at you, I see myself. When I look at you, I see myself which means you have to be consistently honest. It means you have to be stable. And not that you can't have moments, but you have to learn to be consistently honest and worthy of me looking at you 
because when you love me, you are my lover, my friend. And so I got to be able to blend both of those to understand what's happening. Hope that makes sense. It does. It does. In the, in the eyes, they, they, they are you know, the witty to the soul. And, you know, you can look at somebody and, again, see, see where they are. But when you understand that you're sitting here, you know, to heal, and sometimes you're not, you're not going to get back exactly um, what you give out. And once, again, that was another part of that script that I had to, I had to revise. I had to revise it. Or some things I had to delay, release. Some things I just had to, to revise. But this, this is a journey. And, um, then again, that new those new convert years, they 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 were rough, but we had to go to that. Your worst opponent is you. You must understand her disappointment. Her disappointment is based on your lack of initiative to change. I learned this about myself. I learned this about many men I had to counsel with over the years. As that is, they know my wife loved me, or my my girl she loved me. Her disappointment, I said, brother, is based on your initiative or your lack of initiative to change. Her frustration comes from watching her man excel in the mundane with excitement. Her frustration, your frustration came when you found out I could excel in stuff that didn't, that was mundane with excitement. But when it comes to relational survival, you shrink back from relational challenges. And so when we had an issue in our relationship, if I shrank back from that, and I had, to, and if I said, you know what, I'm changing it. I began to use the phrase, "It's unacceptable for me to act like that. It's unacceptable for us to talk this way. It's unacceptable for us to have this energy with each other." So we both gonna have to agree we can't go there because this will not be tolerated in me, and it will not be tolerated in you. It's unacceptable. That meant that I'm initiating change. And she ain't got to keep wondering or doing what she used to do, putting oil, and I'm slipping out the freaking bed, putting oil on my head while I'm asleep, trying to anoint me with some olive oil. I should have thought I should have done that one, <laughs> put some flour on the top of some biscuits, because it didn't go. <laughs> That's it. I should have added some flour to the head, maybe, and, and rolled it up. She needs you to take initiative. She does not want. And listen, y'all, I'm taking my time this evening because I think what we're saying is really pertinent for right now. She needs you to take initiative. She does not want to make all other decisions. She needs you to take initiative. I've seen several women say, I love my man, but he will not take initiative. He will, he will not make certain decisions. I got to Push him, coach him, and get him to make the decisions. And go ahead. Listen, I, these men are depressed, Ron. You know that. Mm -hmm. They're depressed, and and, and you got to know who you marry. You know, it, it, again, don't get in there and marry somebody, and then look at somebody else's relationship, and then say we we can be that if you would just do this, if you would just do that. We don't get to we don't get to paint over God's hand. We don't get to recreate what God has already created. You find the value value in it. Sometimes the value that you may find is that this person is sick and they're depressed. And, and, and let, let me tell you what, I, I've had this benefit. I had the benefit of being married for 28 years. And I've had the benefit of the wrong when he was um, younger and out there just knocking, knocking doors open, right? Mm -hmm. Going through all kinds of doors. Then I, I, then I, I had the, the I was a, a, an observer of the depressed wrong. Mm -hmm. The one who got who, who was way out there, then he did then went through something. So I'm telling you, you look when you were depressed, mm -hmm. your initiative was not the same. But 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 listen, I, I can't speak for nobody else. I think that women should want that from men, but at some point it's just gender. Want what from men? Me and me, you know, um um uh 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 to, 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 to take initiative okay, I got you. in the okay. way that they want them to take initiative. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, if you deal, you deal with somebody who's depressed, you're going to be angry. You're going to be so mad. And, and, and I'm only saying that to you for this reason. Because if you want that from them and they don't get it, give it to you, 
uh, uh, hope deferred can make your heart sick. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes, as a woman, it makes your heart sick. I, I'll tell you what I don't do. I don't want anybody else. What I mean by that is I don't look at this person and wish that he was somebody else. I may look at you and wish you were different to me at times. Mm-hmm. But not based on anybody else, just simply based on how I felt. So I'm not, I don't look at anybody else's marriage and say, that's what I want our marriage to be like. No, I don't. I can do that for the general sense, but maybe, but, and I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it, but the Lord, I don't. I don't say, I wish he was this taller or this shorter, or I wish, I just don't. This is my life. And as long as I, I don't think I'm abused, and I don't let anybody define that for me, because I've had it in, in different ways. I've heard women who, who were terribly physically abused, they went through things and they said, I feel like I deserve it. And then I had also knew when that somebody raised their voice or changed their tone and they 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 smiled and I was saying I'm being verbally abused. And so I don't I don't let other people decide that for me. How do you feel, Jill? How do you feel about it? So I'm saying that to you to say about the depressed part that I, I've had the privilege of seeing a person who didn't start off a certain way go through a season. And I've seen that season happen at different times. Listen, I tell him all the time, often that, Deron, that's your strong voice. Because during this battle, mm-hmm. you know, there were, there were highs and lows and highs and lows of just having to go through so many things. And so, but I had to know this is this person, but I didn't try to change that. So I'm only saying this to you that sometimes you have those people who don't take a minute, take a to even they don't have it, and the ones that you do know have, have it, they, they're depressing. There's, there's something going on. There's something going on. And I think around what you shared with me in, in saying that you said, and, and, and this one made me say that because you made a statement, you said, um, when you don't take they don't take initiative, it doesn't feel, she doesn't feel like she's being taken care of mm-hmm. when he doesn't take the initiative. And I did. I, I, I did go through that. Really? But 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 I had the other part first. I had the ambitious, assertive part first. And so by the time I saw that other part where I began to feel like this, mm-hmm. I, I, I had something to go back to. Let me let me bring your context. She wants you to do the research for a thing that's in the store. Because if she takes the initiative almost all the time. She does not feel that she is being taken care of. And so sometimes she wants you to leave. She wants you, she wants you to study and to figure out what where do we need to go from here? What do we need to do? I, I, you, I couldn't rely on your assertiveness or your aggression to lead us often where we needed to go. And I didn't have, and, and it wasn't expressed for out back then. That came out as, as I had space and freedom. From, from your behavior, when you when you were first married, he asked me within within the first two years. He said, "Jill, what do you want?" See, by this time, I had already been out there dating and doing certain things, and I was the initiative person. And I said, "I just want to be a woman." That's that's, that's the only way I knew how to say. It. But what I really wanted to say is, you know, I want to be sad, and I don't want and I don't want somebody to be scared of my sadness. Right. And I don't yeah. want to have to, you know, someone whose life is so depressed that when I'm sad. They're even more depressed. Mm-hmm. That's it. I yeah. want my chance to be saved. Right. <laughs> we must remember the women we love are in a pro- in the process. The women that we love are in the process. The process of dropping their guards or putting them up. She's in the process of either dropping her guards or putting them up. And it is my responsibility to make it a safe space around me. Therefore, to love her is to see that one of her most valued virtue is trust. And when a self-respecting woman lets you in, when you let me in your life, you silent, you're silently saying to you, when she lets you, and I wish I could tell men this on a regular basis, when she lets you in her space, She's silently saying to you, I'm giving you a chance to prove to me that trust is possible again. 
she when and when you when you let me in your space, if there were other brothers who abused you or didn't treat you properly, fathers in your life or whatever, she's she's opened her heart. This is why when we say love, there's a thin line between love and hate because she's giving you a chance to prove to her you can trust. She can trust again. Your love to her must be spiritual. That's why I said your love is like the Holy Ghost. But da, 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 because your love has to be spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. And when you see that I'm loving you spiritually, you know that you can put your guards down and you don't have to worry about me coming back acting like some kind of fool. Absolutely. And let me say this, right? Because I don't, I, really, we had to grow mm -hmm. together. We are partners in so many ways. He's, you know, if, 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 if he done that right, all so many parts of my life get affected, you know. So because we do work together, we live together, we, you know, um, uh, uh, we're friends, we're lovers, we're, we're, we're partners, and all those kind of ways. Just so, how how did I get through this? Because sometimes it, it it didn't change overnight. It didn't. Um, and, 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 and here's one of my other philosophies, right? During some of the times when he was going through and I needed love and you needed space and mm -hmm. you needed time to grow, I could go, I had friends who could, see, love is genderless. It's genderless. I, it was only really, really bad and I got stuck when you had to be the person that I came to. You had to be all of that to me. Even though there were times in your life where you were fighting for your own survival. Mm -hmm. During those times, you couldn't be all of that to me. And I felt that. Right. And so what, what I learned to do is that I have friends. But let me tell you about my friends. I, I, I don't have friends with, I'm not friends with women who can dog their husbands. Hmm. You, can, you can be mad. Why is that important? Why is that important? Because... If I, if during the time when I needed you, mm -hmm. and then you couldn't be there for me because of what you were going through, and then I went and started talking to certain people about it, if they, listen, if they, if they fed that neck, that thing that okay. could spin out on, 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 I was there for him, now he wants to be there for me, and he ain't there for me, you know, if I was with someone like that, mm -hmm. then, then we're not here, because I don't, I don't get to give you the rest that you needed so that you can get your head together because at some point the world is the way the world was on your shoulders too. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have friends. I have friends who can talk to me about their husband, but I can never talk to them about their husband. Off limits. I have friends, we laugh, they can come to me, oh, he got on my nerve, and some, some, some. And I'm telling you, who is so hard? Then I call the next day, where are you? Oh, we had the movies and we out the dinner. And you know what I never say? I thought y'all was mad at each other last night. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Go over there and listen. I get on the phone, bust me crying. We, we, come over here and run out, hold hands. Because, listen, we don't do that. Sometimes we just need that. And that friend is just a placeholder. And a good friend, but a placeholder for a space that he may come back at home. So I allow. What are you talking about? I'm confused. Okay, then, then let me talk to them. Then, then, then I, what my point here, Deron, is I allow God, I allow life, the spirit of truth, the spirit of love to comfort me. Okay. okay. And it doesn't have to be here. Okay. Now, you cannot not love me or show anything and I get it for somebody else and I come home to a grumpy person 24 7, 10 years straight. But sometimes the weight of the world is on your shoulders. And this is how when the, when the seasons were not overnight and the seasons for him to get the world off his shoulder and do the kind of work that you had to do, and it required some time, I could still have joy. I could still live life. I could still, you know, I, I, I could still come home joyful even though he was grumpy and vice versa. But sometimes you got to step outside your marriage, not with a man, not with a lover, not, not with somebody who's trying to help destroy the relationship, but somebody who understands that the person that you're dealing with, they're just as human as you are. And so I thank God. I don't have a rack of friends. 
um, who, who, who I can do that with. And I've learned, learned at times when I thought I did have other people who I could talk to. And then they, you know, it, 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 and they couldn't handle it. I'm going to say it that way. So, but I do have friends, and especially Mary and some singers who I can say something with me. They say, oh, y'all, y'all crazy. And then we just go on. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I'm, I'm happy because I just said, I got, I got some help for you. If you need a swag over, hit me with your information because I wrote the map over years ago. And I don't know if they still use the word swag, but I'm gonna call it a swaggle. You need a swaggle. And here's what I wanna share. She will only get real when real comes into the room. You will only get real when real comes into the room. And you had to recognize I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't playing no games. You didn't have to worry about me. And your crazy wasn't going to drive me out of here. And my crazy wasn't going to drive you out of here. We, we, we came to an agreement. There could only be one crazy in the house at one time. But we can't be in here doing the, uh, 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 what is that, that movie with they fighting? The Matrix. The Matrix. We can't be in there fighting like in the Matrix and stuff. And we got to make it. I had to make a declaration. Wherever you go, that's where I'm going. If you leave me, then that's where I'm going to be. And whatever happens, that's what's going to happen. Why? Because I'm committed and I made a declaration. I am going to grow. And we're going to get through this rough season. Mm -hmm. And what was the real that came in the room? What did that look like? I needed to see him do the work on himself. Mm -hmm. Brutal honesty. There you go. That's it. That's the word. I, I, I needed to see that brutal honesty when it came to him. And not just when it came to you. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I'm telling you, that's the like, those are the those are the pieces that lets you know that you're moving towards the light, even though you feel it feels a bit rough. Fussing at you when you going into the refrigerator. I was I get angry when you went to the refrigerator. I was pissed off. Why? Because I was trying to lose weight. And you could eat what you wanted to eat, or whatever the case may be, and you could eat whatever it was. And I did not like it. And then I was sitting on the couch watching you. And instead of just watching you go to the refrigerator and do whatever I'm doing, ah, I was angry because I was fat and overweight. And because I hated what I was doing, I projected on you my own pain. Let somebody hate themselves. But you know, all, all I'm going to say this to you again, you'll find out this when you have children. You'll find out that you can be a light in somebody else's darkness. You may not want to do it for somebody else's child, but oftentimes people will do it. Tell me, why would you say that now? Because sometimes uh, 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 when someone doesn't like himself, when someone is has a secret, I always call it a secret, when someone has a secret pain or hurt that they shame and all of those things, you know, you, you, the, the other person tend to turn their life back. But my point is that um, that's sometimes that's what somebody's going through. And if you could just not take it personally, really, right. if you could just not take it personally, um, what you're trying to do, right, it will go, it, you all, it will go a long way. But if you take it personally, and, 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 and I don't make what you do and what you say is more about you than it is about me. If I may feel some kind of way and I will address that, but I know that that's not what you're saying is not coming from my heart, it's coming from your heart. So, so that's how I can identify who has the sick heart in the room at the moment. The person talking, not the person you're talking to. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask with the wrong moments. These are the last things I'll share, at least the three right here. We've been teaching this for years. Change is choose not to act like a little boy. Change is when I choose not to act like a little boy. And I take the high road. The high road is change. Number one, I can't change people. I live by this. Number two, you can only change yourself. I can only change myself. And number three, others tend to change towards me or you as you change. And I stick stuck to those. Until you become friendly, people will not become friendly with you. Until you become likable, people will not like you. 
And I had to come to a point. I can't change you. I can only change myself. But when I change myself, because we were clashing, but I finally said, when I change, because it just got stupid, bitter at some, a bunch of times. And I said, we can't go through this no more. And I said, don't you worry about it. I used to just declare, give me, give me 90 days, <laughs> because I knew my behavioral pattern. Then it got to the point, give me 60 days. I don't even put a time limit on it. And, this, and that's the initiation that we get. That's the initiation that helped. The, the, that? the initiative. That's the initiative. Listen, we got a situation. I don't have to say, do you want to keep giving you lectures and, right. and, and leaving notes and some people pulling out Bible scriptures and leaving books? I don't have to do all that. Listen, this is what it means to leave, what it means to leave your house. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't like this going in here. That's, that's going back to the beginning mm -hmm. of this broadcast. Right. Listen, man, you got to be a man, be a man at your home. And spiritually, you have you be the one to say, listen, listen. If something happens, it ain't gonna go down on my back. Right. It, it won't be me. And he did, and he's done it several, several times to say, listen, I don't like this. Right. Right. And guess what I got to do at that point? I can keep it to his word. I don't have to ever throw nothing up in his face. Mm -hmm. I don't keep it to, to right. a word if the conversation come up because what he, he made that vow, that declaration in front of me. I am taking the initiative here. I'm taking care. Well, a man's highest form of spirituality is the condition of his relationships. And I I remember one one time we went to Florida to see Bishop Penn. Mm -hmm. And we were at opposite ends on some issues. And when we sat down and I listened to him, he was talking and that kind of stuff. And I, I didn't think that he totally hit exactly what we were dealing with. When that conversation was, was over, I saw my own way because we were being honest and sharing with him what the deal was. That was the first time that I said to you, give me 30 days. It may take me 60, but it give me at least 30 days to change this because it's unacceptable for me to be like this. And it wasn't, I wasn't going to, I ain't going to change because I ain't going to give you the satisfaction. I had to determine that this is not acceptable. And then I found out that my daughter ended up doing the same thing. She learned how to have some of the same mentalities because you have to be the author of your own change. That was a little something, something in the spirit. As far oh, that as was something. <laughs> And we are sold out, living, delivered, and everlasting righteous service. And so let me just serve you one more thing. When you're brutally honest, let me just say that. I just want to say it right here. Let me see it. Just get up and do it. You want love back in your life? Just get up and do it. Just do it. And everything will be okay. I'm done. done. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop here, but I have to say this because it, it is a blessing and it is, it is a hilarious at the same time. See, a couple of weeks ago, this is, this is why you gotta let say and let God have his space and all his space. Listen, come do this things at six o'clock. He try to drink coffee and, and, and do energy. I mean, energy drink. Come to Kilaro. I'll just touch the way. Listen, what am I saying to you? You see what you see today? See, for me as a person. Who saw the struggle? See, this is this is why you can't make me down, God. If you just keep loving the wrong. Sometimes you gotta wait on the spirit to do, wait on the promise, the gift that God has promised. Wait, wait, wait. Because uh y'all, y'all saw all this right here. And I couldn't understand for three weeks. And because you brought it up to me, and you said it, but for three weeks, and I said it, I had to check my, su I, I ran out of certain one of my supplements, my mushroom, and I switched over to a, the same brand, but just another kind, and I would be ready in the morning to roll, but by the time I went through all the stress of setting everything up, I was wore out, stressed out. And so you had to share with me, and I had to say, listen, and then that's when I realized, I said, I had to. 
sound like I was criticizing him mm-hmm. because I was frustrated because I, I didn't understand what was happening. I thought he just was not being on top of things. Because mm-hmm. you said you can't, you, you're wrong, you can't I, do this. You can't do this. I said, listen, if you can't do it, just let me know. I'll go ahead. I'll cover it for us. But listen, you are nodding and falling asleep. And it, <laughs> but he said to me, Jill, go ahead. He said, normally, years ago, that would have been, don't do this on this day. Wait. We just did a broadcast. We can go through all of that in the news to the moment of the truth. But the beauty of what, what, what you are here, this is why a woman needs to have a voice. She needs to have a, a soft, sensitive heart if she can. So that she can. And sometimes that day, it didn't come out so sweet because we were in the middle of things and I just didn't have time. But the bottom line was this in terms of how we got to a truth. Because I could talk and because you were receptive, and I can tell you it was because you were receptive. Because before I said it to him, I took a deep breath and said, okay, Jill, you know, you have to put your, your visible gods up. <laughs> and I just said, listen, all right, man, what is going on? And I don't, and I'm like, this, 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 and this. And he said, Jill, I didn't even realize that that's what was happening. And then it opened up the door for communication. It made me go back and research what I was doing. Absolutely. And I have, and, and, and we got to narrow it down because he didn't take offense at the fact that I said it. A certain way, I was anxious and I was frustrated. So it came from that person. And I said, Duan, what are you doing? Monday through Saturday, you bouncing, you you seem different. On Sunday, why are you falling out? I mean, what, what, what's going on? And then, this is new. And so once we got to say that, you got to look at the supplements. Oh, Jill, I tried this thing. This is new. I wasn't doing this before. And then just because we were able to communicate, he was able to remove this move that, go back to this. And it happened on a uh, maybe another one and a half times, so to speak. But what's the bottom line? We're here now. Like, I didn't have to drink my smart coffee or anything. And to, you didn't take a nap after? And I didn't take a nap. I worked with this thing on stand you gave me. And I normally would have but to it, do that. You right. know, but it, it, it is what happens when the spirit, when love and, and the spirit is somebody that keeps them, get them excited. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what this is. Because really, he normally has to, okay, fast couple of weeks, listen, he had to go to sleep, or, or he would have been up here voice dragging. Right. Uh, uh, right. So, what am I saying here? Guess what? That, did, that happened because we were able to communicate. He had, his heart was surrendered. He didn't take it personally. He didn't feel like I was, I was um, criticizing his craft and what he does and what he's called to do. Because my heart wasn't to hurt him, but I had to have that meaning. You were speaking the truth in love. You spoke the truth, and I knew it had affected you and it affected me, but I did not know what was going on. Right. Because you would be fine, and then all of a sudden, it I is, could see oh, it happening. And yeah. so, guess what? I'm so thankful that we were able to have that conversation. I'm so thankful for the power of the truth and the power of surrender to something bigger than ourselves. I'm so thankful to be able to have this conversation and have this be what I get to remember. Because once again, I get to see in this situation, in real time, the spirit, uh, 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 what they say, quicken somebody. Mm-hmm. I can see that in real time. And I'll have energy later on this evening too. So just know oh, that God. the spirit quickens. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Bye, y'all.